Hello, welcome to 949 Racing. Today we're gonna to talk about our new Zeta coilovers for the 86. So we have these available for the Gen 1 and Gen 2. This is the production shock. This is the, a rear uh, Zeta. Um, these are available, single adjustable. The Swiss spring is standard, uh, billet, uh, spherical perch. And I'm gonna see if I can turn this thing. Let's see what, I don't know if I can do this with my bare hands. You can see, this is what a coaxial perch does. It, the, the spring perch is independent from the body mount. And we have a separate video. It'll be linked in the video description of why you want a coaxial perch, why you don't want the spring pressing up against the mount. Um, that's a complex subject. We have a separate video on that. Um, proprietary high rate helpers, uh, Torrington bearings, which allows basically the collar to move freely without binding. Um, when the springs compress, they tend to twist a little bit. That's one of the reasons you want a Torrington bearing. This is basically like a a needle bearing that's in here. Um, the shock, these shocks are made for us, just the damper is made for us by Tractive in the Netherlands. Uh, if you're not familiar with Tractive, um, they're a motorsports uh, shock supplier, so they do like um, WEC, um, they have uh, OEM contracts with like BMW, uh, KTM, uh, Pagani, uh, Dallara over in Europe, um, and they have a semi-active shock that we do for some of the other applications. We this is the front setup. Now this is an inverted strut, meaning that the 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 whole shock is basically inverted. So this is a 38 millimeter piston and this is a, a 46 millimeter piston. Um, so this is the front strut assembly. We have our own proprietary uh, camber plates uh, with spherical bearing mounts. And again, you can see that the mount is independent of the spring perch. This is important, particularly on a strut car, because typically you have a really radical static camber angle. And if your spring is pushing up against the mount, the spring gets twisted and that affects the uh, the spring performance that you really don't want. You want to have a separate mount where it's floating independently of your of your pl your top plate. Again, uh, a helper spring, Torrington Torrington bearings. And one of the things we do um, with our shock, rather than making the strut flange part of the uh, body, it's actually this sort of clamp me mechanism. Now, when we ship these to you, this is already a preset height, so don't loosen these and play with them unless you're gonna do some extra studies, in, uh, uh, basically a travel check. The reason we do this is this setup is optimized for a, the real common 86 uh, kind of autocross and track uh, wheel and tire setup, which is typically a 17 by nine wheel and a 255 4017 tire. So that's gonna be about a 25 inch tall tire. And that means that that tire is gonna move a, a certain distance at full bump and it's gonna come really close to the uh, plastic fender line. What you're trying to do is get as much of that travel as possible. You don't wanna waste any of that space because if you waste some of that space, it means you have less bump travel and your car doesn't go over bumps as well. So we designed these and set these up to use the maximum amount, amount of bump travel, but it is adjustable. So if you're running a taller tire, like say a 265, 35, 18, which like we ran on our time attack, it's a little bit taller tire, it's a little bit wider and you might have to move this strut flange down, like turn it, basically loosen the bolts and turn it down once or twice. Put your springs out, put your car all together, compress it and see if you've got a little bit more room or if you got less room if you need to adjust this. So um, I want to also show you our, uh, uh, what I call camber chips or camber eccentrics. So these are, this is your, where your steering knuckle bolts to. Now the bottom just uses like a factory style bolt it, where it pivots. The, the top bolt actually has a little eccentric that pops in there. And, and I have another one here. This is another strut where I've pulled it out. You can see the, the eccentric. See, it's an oval hole. And you can see this, but it's not round. This hole's round. And this one, the bolt can move back and forth. So to keep it from slopping around, and I've seen some people just hollow it out, but they're, they're gonna slip and that's really dangerous. You don't want that. So we make these steel inserts and we offer two. So see if you can show these in my hand here, and you can see straight down, you can see one, the hole's right in the middle and the other one, the hole's kind of offset. So you have three positions. You have a max camber, medium camber, and then min camber. So you can basically take this one and flip it upside down. So what you would do in these is you could run minimum camber or maximum camber with this one up, uh, or this one which is zeroed out and it holds the bolt in the middle. Basically what that's doing, it's locking the bolt in, in a minimum, medium and maximum position. And then of course you've got your camber plates on the top. So that allows, um, depending on the right height of your car and what you're doing with it, it allows you to go all the way up to about five degrees. Now five degrees may seem extreme, but if you're building a car where grip and performance is the maximum priority, you're not really worried about tire wear or like tram lining or anything, you just wanna go for max performance, you're gonna want about five degrees of native camber. And that sounds radical, but that's what basically you're gonna run on a fast time attack or autocross car. 
Um, and our setup allows that. Most, in fact, well, I will just say this, every other setup that we've looked at in terms of suspension, they don't have that adjustment range. And there's a lot more to getting that adjustment range more than just slotting it because if you just take a typical strut, a typical 86 strut and slot them and tilt the knuckle in, the tire hits the strut or the knuckle will actually hit the strut there. And there's a lot of, um, without going into all of our trade secrets and how we managed it, our geometry here and the machining here is very specific and it allows the knuckle to be tilted all the way in to get that five degrees of camber. Now, not too many people need that five degrees of camber. For the people that do, it's a true motorsport shock. So we wanted to make sure that that was available. Most people on the street are gonna run two to three degrees and that's kind of a happy middle ground between getting that extra grip for track or autocross and still being able to daily drive it without having excessive tram lining or, or tire wear. And your factory alignment is basically straight up and down. It's almost like no camber, like uh, you know zero to like maybe a half a degree. So um, you have a wide range of adjustment here and for, for like stock ride height, with these struts, you can go anywhere from about one degree negative all the way down to five degree, and you can kind of increment with the combination of the camber plate and the uh, and the chips. You can basically find your perfect increment uh, in, in anywhere in between there. So let's walk over to the car, and we're going to look at an installation. Um, this is a uh, GR that we got in the shop. We were doing some road testing with it. We're also doing some other parts development on this, which we'll talk about later in, in a future video, but that's why the hood's open. We got some other stuff we're working on. So this is the rear shock, Sonny. See if you can show up under here. So you can see how this shock is, a, it's a one piece shock. This doesn't have an extension to like a, a lot of two piece shocks will have a shock that ends about here and they'll have a hollow extension that's like an adapter. This shock, you can see it just barely carries control on it. It's basically the maximum oil volume and nitrogen, nitrogen volume. We have another video, two piece coilovers, linked in the description below that talks about two-piece coilovers and why you want to try to avoid two-piece coilovers. You don't see two-piece coilovers on pro-level motorsports builds and that's why because they don't have the oil and nitrogen volume. Those are built out of um, a manufacturer will have maybe three or four cartridges that they use and if the shock's not the right length for the car they built basically an extension adapter so it's just like you're not you're paying for a shock but you're not getting it you just get this big hollow adapter on the, on the bottom. Um, with the proper motorsport shock, the shock is built actually is specifically for the control arm. So this body length is exactly the right length for the car. It's the exact amount of bump travel, droop travel, and everything. It's designed uh, specifically for the car. So this is where um, a lot of the struts that we've seen, and we've heard a lot of horror stories talking to a lot of people kind of offline about their other high-end shock setups that have kinematic problems. In the suspension, it's moving up and down. And you've got rubber bushings that deflect. So what, like when your factory rubber bushings, when you hit the brakes, this will move, this will flex back here. The control arms flex, everything's flexing and moving. So you really have to do a lot of studies to understand the kinematics and where everything moves. And what we've heard, in links that don't work. Um, uh, factory uh, in links that bind. You'll notice how close this gets to the bottom of the shock here. Um, and uh, the range of motion here. And I'm gonna spin this back around now this is full droop, mind you. You'll see how close this is to the body. When this is full compression, this runs up close to the body. Getting this geometry right meant custom in-links, custom brackets, custom shocks, custom <laughs> strut flanges, and a whole bunch of prototypes that not only works with the stock sway bar, but we tried this with a few aftermarket sway bars that have adjustment holes here. So this in-link is in a different angle. And we tried it out and it basically, it's gonna clear. So uh, if you've had problems with your struts before where your end links hit or bind or lack adjustment, um, Zetas come with these adjustable end links. So you can properly corner weight it and you can run five degrees of camber and you can run full lock and you're not gonna rip your end links off. Um, people who aren't, don't have coilovers on their 86 yet might not know about this. People who have bought high-end coilovers for their 86 and are trying to get their car corner weighted and put adjustable front sway bars, they probably know this story. Um, so that's something that isn't really talked about, but it's something that we spent a lot of time um, getting dialed in. You can see the uh, the helper spring here. Now this one doesn't have the boot on it. We wanted to be able to show you what the what the inverted strut looks like uh, on here. And it's got our, our camera plate on there. So that's the front strut. Um, these come uh, for the race rates. Our standard race rate is a 500 front, 500 rear. Um, we know a lot of um, kits come with more spring in the back and what we have found, um, that's usually to help to get the car to turn because the car is understeer. What we found in our testing, when we tried that, our cars were too loose. The reason why is we developed more front grip. 
And you might say, well, maybe you were just going slow, but then we set track records everywhere we went um, and uh, did really, really well with our car. And our car routinely pulls 1.5G on, on street tires. Um, what we found is because our front end was more compliant and developing more grip and we were able to get more camera with our suspension, we were developing more front grip, which meant we actually needed more front spring. So if you're questioning our spring rates, know that we've actually developed them and tested it and tried a bunch of different combinations. 500-500 is a great place to start if you're on a 9-inch wheel and 255-4017s, which is what most people run on these cars. That's a good place to start. A little bit of aero. If you've got a little bit of a splitter, a small wing on the back, that's a good place to start. Now, if you're doing a huge wing on the back, a big, massive, you know, wing that's like this wide, 12-inch cord, big, giant end plates, huge splitter on the front, lots of power, then I would recommend bumping up to our, basically what I call our time attack rates, which is our 600-600 rates. Um, for the touring rates for the street car, um, 250-200 for the first-gen car and 250-250 for the second-gen car. Now, if you're kind of wondering between those two, we always try to optimize for one purpose, and if the shock is versatile enough, as Zetas are, you're able to um, be perfect at one thing and still pretty good at the other. What we don't recommend is choosing somewhere in between because then it's not perfect at anything. You've spent four or five grand on your car and it doesn't really do anything perfectly. It just kind of is mediocre at everything. And, that, and that's just a, it's a waste of money. If you're gonna set up a track car, make it where it's killer on the track. And the beauty of a shock that's this versatile when these are turned down to their softest damping settings, they actually ride pretty nice on the streets. Definitely a firm ride because it's got st stiff springs, but this is the key. Key thing to remember with any Zeta application, they're never harsh. You're never going to get banging, crashing, bottoming, rattles, bangs, clunks, things like that. You just don't get any of that. That's not, you, know, you get that with your Chinese $1,500 coilovers, but when you're talking about a, a $4,500 motorsport setup like this, they're buttery everywhere. It's a very firm ride because it's got very stiff springs, but if you're looking for an HPD setup that you hardly ever drive on the street, then just go for the race rates. They're not going to ride that bad. Conversely, if it's really just a daily driver and you hardly ever do track days, you do maybe one or two track days a year or one on across a year, it's pretty much just a daily driver, then you definitely want to go for the touring rates. With the touring rates, these ride, well, this car had the sack suspension on it, the, or the, the sport suspension on it. These shocks with the touring rates ride better than the factory sport suspension does. Definitely butterier, better over small bumps. They do everything better than the stock suspension and they handle a lot better and they're adjustable and they're fully adjustable, adjustable damping and uh, adjustable ride height. So for the fo street focused, if street is your primary and you still want to be pretty good for the, when you put a helmet on, definitely go for touring. If when you put a helmet on is, is job one, that's your most, uh, your, your highest priority, then you definitely want to go uh, for race springs. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, visit 949racing.com, shoot us an email, info at 949racing, talk to Ed, and he can walk you through alignment, tires, spring choices. Um, we will see you at the track.